as Hawaii's premier IT organization, we offer leading-edge infrastructure that answers those questions and accelerates time to market. And just as you'd expect, we've got connections. We partner with leaders in cloud services like Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. At our vast experience managing and implementing enterprise IT systems, we've got a truly world-class cloud solution. So whatever your business demands, wherever they may take you, whatever technology is required to get you there, we've got you done. We've got your cloud. It's powered by BTS. Okay, that was it. Okay, welcome to uh, Internet 4.0 era. You might have heard the term actually. It refers to all the buzzwords that regard the technology artificial intelligence, cloud computing, uh, machine learning, IoT, and everything. So um, just to give you uh, an example of what will be actually happening in, in a few years from now, and actually the technologies are already uh, implemented, let's try and step in the shoes of a chief financial officer, let's say, of a business or a chief executive officer uh, that has to get prepared, crack some numbers, get the reports, and uh, get into a meeting for handling a crisis. Okay, so we have Mr. Robot starts working from 5 a.m. generating the net profit revenue, the net revenue report, and uh, generate the, the, the data which will be fed in, the, in its analytics engine. By 6 a.m., this data will have to be loaded on Tableau or any other BI server, and the dashboards regarding this report have to be refreshed. It's 7 a.m., and now the, the, the funny part, actually, the natural language generator adds the respective narratives in these dashboards so that, you know, when the C-level executive steps into his office, can actually have access to the, the updated reports along with the narratives. It's 8, 10, and the, you know, the C executive needs to interact in the natural language with the chatbot in order to split into segments, read down reports, and get everything ready for his meeting. Or her meeting, actually. Okay, and then the, 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 the executive further drills down to the cost variance analysis and gets everything report for the project and the services uh, which actually has to do with the meeting. Okay, what's this all about? This is all about technologies that exist today. This can be done through robotic process automation, artificial intelligence, delivered and accessed via cloud services, and of course the human interaction. So imagine a world where, this is a very, very plain example actually, um, the, the businesses could do and have uh, automated reports, services, and other stuff for the business. Okay, let's have, let's have a deep dive into our own um, subject. The cloud computing. I guess that most of you guys have heard the term probably know and are familiar with some of its uh, capabilities, benefits, and whatsoever. So according to the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, cloud computing is a model for enabling ubiquitous, convenient, and on-demand network access to a shared pool of IT resources. The basic and fundamental benefits is that we're talking about rapidly provisioned services and released with the minimal management effort and labor cost, either from the cloud service provider or from the business side. Okay, that sounds impressive, I guess, but let's see the five fundamental pillars of that model. First of all, we're talking about a service, we're talking about a model where the resource usage can be monitored, controlled, reported, and we're talking about full transparency between the cloud service providers and the customers, which is the business. 
we're talking about a model which actually refers to on demand and self-service delivery. This means that the business can actually provision the computing capabilities based on the business needs now or in a very, very short period of time, okay, without being dependent, without being dependent on the client cloud service provider. And the next step of that is actually uh, the rapid elasticity uh, option, which means that you know, the resources can be provisioned, scaled up, scaled down, based on the current business needs uh, immediately and on demand. The cloud services are actually delivered over the network. That means, and I have a story for you actually in a couple of slides, um, and they, they actually uh, can be delivered in our tablet, uh, laptop, uh, mobile devices, wherever we are. This is, this is the point actually, to have access to what we need whenever, from wherever, anytime. And last but not least, we're talking that the cloud service providers actually can allocate their resources on multiple consumers, multiple businesses. Okay, um, you know, I don't want, it's, it's, it's a quite technical actually uh, uh, subject, the cloud computing. However, I just want to give you in a nutshell uh, the two main uh, areas we're talking about and how the, the different, the multiple cloud services are differentiated. Okay, first of all, on the left column, we're talking about the deployment model of a cloud service. Okay, what does that mean? This means a specific cloud environment that is actually distinguished, as I said, by ownership, size, and access. So there are four, four types of different cloud environments that we can have. Number one is the public cloud, okay, where actually the cloud service is provided by, directly by the vendor to either uh, multiple companies or just dedicated enterprise. Uh, this one along with the private cloud are the two most common actually that you can, uh, you can find. The private cloud, actually the cloud services are owned and operated by one single enterprise. Okay, it's at their own uh, specific data center that might be leased or whatever, okay? Then we have the hybrid cloud, which is, which is an actually a combination of uh, public and private cloud. And then we have the community cloud, where public or uh, private cloud can be shared by an industry group, government organizations, etc. So these are the four deployment types model that we can have regarding cloud. But how the service is actually delivered? So there are, there, there are three, three types of how the service is actually delivered. And when we're talking about the service model, we're talking about the specific combination of IT resources and how they are delivered and how they are utilized by the company. Uh, the first one is the software as a service, where actually the companies uh, Run, uh, run finished applications directly from the cloud service providers, okay, on a subscription basis model. And I'm going to, to explain a bit that later on. Such uh, cases are uh, Dropbox, NetSuite, Gmail, etc. The second service type model is the platform as a service model, where the companies load and run their own software on cloud platforms on again on a subscription basis model. And the last one is the infrastructure as a service where the companies actually provision their own IT uh, resources like servers, storage, uh, databases, etc. Okay? So these two columns actually uh, depict, let's say, the, the world of cloud computing and how it has been delivered to the company. Okay, the key characteristics of, of a cloud platform as a service. What I was actually told you earlier, um, before joining Deloitte, uh, I used to have uh, run my own startup uh, for like three, four years. And uh, uh, we were running in the business, we're in the business of internet and telco. I don't know how, how many of you are engineers in, in this field. 
So what we actually uh, did, what we actually were, uh, we were internet service providers via cloud. We delivered internet, and I'm talking about professional needs of internet to businesses and not consumers, to the companies. So what we had to, to compete actually were all the traditional giants, internet service providers, local and global. We would not be able to do so, we would not be able to sell us our product and service either from a very, very small office up to a bank, or we would not be able to uh, have agreements with global players if we, if, if we were not delivering our service through the cloud. So please keep in mind that these six pillars are very, very important. So first of all, uh, cloud platforms and services are dynamic, okay? This means that based on the, on the business needs, you can scale up or scale down as fast as you want. And this is the number one priority, especially in, uh, in our world in, in this era. Second of all, we're talking about self-service, so we can, the business can create environments, they can create their own resources, without being dependent on the cloud service providers, okay? And they can add capacity and capability of IT resources at any way they want. Very important for the businesses is um, that they actually can avoid having duplicate environments uh, through the cloud computing service. So you can have the same environment for multiple business units, okay? Depending on the needs again and everything. Uh, but you can reduce the labor cost of uh, provisioning, sustaining, and maintaining, and uh, monitoring multiple cloud environments. Number four, very, very important. We're talking about a scalable model. We're talking about a scalable service that is delivered uh, on the everyday basis. So you can very, very quickly increase the capacity, you can increase the resources, you can decrease the resources, you can allocate the resources on different business units as, you know, based on, on, on your preferences. Of course, it's always about the money, so um, the cloud services, as I said previously, are, are um, delivered on a subscription basis model. So this means that you don't have to um, make any upfront large investments, but you just pay as you go. Okay, pay as per your business needs, have higher demands, higher requirements, means that you can you know, increase the capacity of the resources, you can change the model of, of cloud service. And number six, it's the logic behind that. Uh, we're talking about the digital-based architecture. This means that the focus has stopped being on the actual hardware and uh, it's, it's been focused on the actual use of hardware and what we want to achieve. Okay, um, the benefits can be, you know, drilled down in, um, in a very, very uh, big depth. I've tried and summarized four uh, main areas and uh, a couple of bullets. I don't want you know to just read all of them. I just want you to, to keep in mind when you leave this room that first we're talking about the necessity of the modern business to be agile. This means that we have to avoid uh, unpredicted uh, investments, financial investments, upfront financial investments on whatever uh, our business needs. We have to be able to handle the needs and fulfilling these needs via increasing capacity, capability, and changing models. And also, when we're talking about agility, is about moving fast towards the markets. Monetize our value very, very fast towards the markets. So this is actually fulfilled 
we have the, the maximum independence that we can have by outsourcing external vendors. Okay? And cloud, cloud services are allowing that. Of course, as obvious from the first slide, I guess, we're talking about getting closer, getting moving towards innovation. So uh, cloud is combined with multiple other um, technologies, emerging technologies of uh, Industry 4.0. So actually, we, it's better linked to, the, to these technologies and it uh, encourages the entrepreneurial culture of a business. The third, the third area is, uh, is, okay, again, about the money. We're talking about the reduced IP capital spending. Okay, of course, um, when we're talking about capex is the capitalized expenses, so it's about when, uh, let's say, the, the company buys a server, buys laptops, buys whatever, and it's, uh, it's actually their own asset, while operational expenses uh, refers to um, to rents, leasing softwares, etc. So we have the cloud actually um, allows uh, a shift from the capex to opex. Okay, this of course might be a bit tricky. Um, I'm going to explain a bit later. But the, the the important thing is that the company is able to control the cost and pay as you go on their needs. And of course. What's the best for the company if not focusing on its, its own business, its own core business? Okay, so we, the IT people, the IT world tries to make everybody's in the company lives much more easier uh, so that they can work and um, create and deliver uh, on their business units what they have to do. Okay. Uh, last year, we, we conducted uh, a global survey regarding the disruptive technologies and the impact they have on, uh, on businesses. It is a very, very interesting um, survey. I have just added a couple of slides here so that you can see the trends and how leading organizations globally um, see the cloud computing. Okay, the, the survey was conducted in 25 sectors across uh, six industries. Uh, more than 500 executives of leading organizations took part. And okay, when we're talking about leading organizations, we're talking about uh, companies that with 86% of the, of the companies um, had over 1 um, billion US dollars in, in revenue. Okay. Uh, so, who are actually taking the decisions and who are actually evaluating the needs and if and how we're going to move to cloud? Okay, as obvious, um, the, the initiative for moving to cloud is basically driven by the CIOs or the CTOs. Okay, nothing surprising here. However, it seems that the rest of the C-suite executives also found great opportunity this is very important, great opportunity in the business, in improving the business performance and see the opportunity for their own business units and not just technology, uh, commodity, staff or trend or whatever. Okay? And this actually is very important not only for the businesses but also for the cloud service providers. And why is that? Because the opportunity is out there, out there for them in order to develop and deliver services not only based on the technology trends but also addressing the needs of other business units of, uh, of the company. So both parts, cloud service providers and companies uh, can work hand in hand, you know, work close and uh, you know, explore the benefits out of that. Okay, and this is another interesting um, slide. The 93% of the respondents either have already adopted or are in the process of adopting cloud, cloud services. 
93% of an 86% of leading organizations with an annual revenue of 1 billion US dollars. Not, lo not lots of questions, I guess. The important thing is that the top three reasons for adopting the clouds, number one, we're talking about innovation. Number two is how we go, how we approach the market, the time to market for delivering projects, for delivering products, for delivering services. And number three, improve the performance. So I would like you to, you know, remember that the three, the three uh, main, main uh, drivers is innovation, is performance, and is the time to market. Okay? The rest of the 7%, 7% that, you know, is not willing or has not started to adopt the cloud, it seemed that the insight was that um, they actually seem to be, you know, okay with their own um, infrastructure right now and their, and their way of doing business, okay? 65%, let's move on to, this, to the third column, 65% expected for uh, an, a reduce on their annual operational expenses. The 65 percent. However, however, only the 35 percent saw that as the main driver for moving to cloud. And also, it seems that the two-third, one-third, would expect increasing cost moving to cloud. However, they're willing to do so. And this actually highlights the importance and the, and the perception of moving towards innovation, business performance, and not only reducing cost. Okay, um, so we have talked about all the good things of the cloud. However, as, as everywhere and anywhere, there are some considerations that we should uh, you know, keep in mind. First of all, let's see the strategic benefits of, of cloud adoption. We're not talking about cost reduction or just you know, innovation or whatever. We're talking about enabling new business lines, actually, in a company. Um, it also enables reaching and going after a bigger market share, which actually is, um, you know, is a must when competing in our world. The fee structure, we should consider any upfront cost discounts and not only the related expenses from moving to a CapEx model to an OPEX model, okay? And uh, as number three uh, states, we should also keep in mind that there might, buy, there might be some hidden costs when moving to this model. Such cost might be, um, you know, consulting services, getting new new people on board, <laughs> investing in um, in uh, people's you know expertise, etc. Of course, these are costs that will be on the benefit of, of the company in the long term. Just you know, the company has to take into consideration when things to move to cloud these things as well. And regarding the ROI, the return on investment, uh, the benchmark is that there's a saving of 30 to 40 percent uh, from the cloud adoption for the first two or three years. However, uh, the depreciation deduction does not take, take place here. So, you know, in, in, a, in a accounting books and everything, that might be, you know, um, food for thought, let's say. Uh, however, it's not something that should stop us from, uh, from this um, path. So that's all for me. Uh, thank you again for being here.
Send us the world so